Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted the Shadow Piercer from the Corvus Cabal with contrast paint. This video will be a step-by-step -step guide to show you how I painted the Shadow Piercer using contrast paints. The goal here is to produce a tabletop battle-ready miniature to a good standard and have fun doing it too. You'll see all the paints I used and all the equipment as well. And if you want something a little bit longer, almost in real time, then check out my video I made of the Shrike Talon where I painted that miniature with contrast paints too. Okay, let's get started. So here she is, the Shadow Piercer, another brilliant miniature for the Corvus Cabal. And to prime her, I used the Wraithbone Citadel Spray and I used the Citadel Plastic Glue to assemble her. The paints we'll be using will mostly be the Citadel colour contrast paints with some layer and base paints as well. And the brush I used in most of this video is the Army Painter Wargamer Character Brush, which is a great brush, but I also started to use the Kalinsky brush. And I'll put links to all of this in the description below. Okay, our first colour is the Contrast Wildwood, and this is going to be for all the wooden handles and starting with her kind of sword weapon here. We put in a nice coat of the Wildwood. And the great thing with these contrast paints is pretty much most of them is just going to be a case of one coat. So one coat's all we need and we just want to apply it as neatly as possible. This Wildwood's really nice and gives us a, a great effect for wood. And I use this on all the terrain for the catacombs as well. But it's perfect for these handles on the weapons like this. And using this longer brush now, and this is something I'm going to start doing all the time, using a longer brush rather than the smaller one because it holds more paint and it gives you a lot more control and having that extra paint on the brush means it doesn't run out too soon and um, you can cover a better area much more uniformly and it just gives you a lot more control and the, the tip is more fine um, and so you can get a better tip to the brush which will also give you more control on those details that you want to bring out. We're on to the snake bite leather contrast paint, another great paint, and this is going to be for all the leather straps and the belt and any leather parts of material on the miniature. And again, we want to load up the brush and not too much for these small bits, but we want to make sure we're getting a nice coat in. And I try and start and end the brush strokes where I want most of that paint to build up. So any recesses, areas of shadow, any areas where the material's folded, we want to get the paint to pool there. And, but on the raised areas, we want to wick that paint away and leave those raised areas uh, highlighted. So I'm just using the brush to get the paint into those areas by wiping it almost against the grain um, to get the paint off the bristles. And then that goes into those areas. And then I use the brush to push and pull the paint to where I want it to go. And I'm finding with the contrast paints, you've got plenty of time to work with it. So as long as you put a good amount on first, like you can see here, I'm wiping it down and that paint's coming off onto all the, all the bits of leather that we want. And then I'm just pushing it and pulling the paint in the directions I want it to sit. And you've got plenty of time, even once it's on there, to keep moving it. And then when you're, ha when you're happy, just leave it alone and then let that contrast paint do the work let it dry and then it should naturally pull to give you a nice shadow and also leave those raised areas a little bit lighter to act as a highlight. So these miniatures are really fine, the Corvus Cabal, and there's lots of bits that easily break off. So I'm constantly being really careful where I'm putting my hands and the brush and this little tiny bits like these straps that need to be painted. And so I'm trying to also be as neat as possible when applying the paint. So although we're going to touch it up later with some layer paints, I want to make sure I don't make too much of a mess. So I'm really taking my time, but also getting enough paint on that brush so that, it, you know, we're not just putting a little bit on. We are getting enough that's going to pull. So it looks quite thick here, but that's exactly what we want because that paint's going to naturally run into those recesses. And the little bindings there on the wrist guard, that paint's going to want to naturally sit in there and give us some really nice tones. And you can see I'm always moving the model. So I've got my arms on the table. I'm all braced. So I've got lots of control where I'm going and I'm making sure that the model's moved so that I'm always trying to approach them from the same angle. And I know exactly where I'm going to put my brush and which part's going to be painted. And I've always make sure I've got enough paint on the bristles to cover that, that area. So really take my time, be as neat as possible, and then make the model do the work for me. 
And now we're on to the Contrast Black Templar. So you can see we're working through the darker colours first. And this is going to be for the hood. So I'm going for a straight up black hood here. And I'm using the box art as a reference. And I'm just giving that a nice coat. And now this is a lot thicker than when I was doing those finer bits of leather and straps earlier. So I've really got a lot of paint on the brush here. And you can see as I wipe it off, there's a big like blob of it there. And that's what we want. We want that black Templar paint to start pooling in those recesses and folds. And this dries really nicely to give a kind of black material or black leather effect. And um, just try not to have it too much on the raised areas. So push and pull that paint around and put it where you want it to go. And then once you've got it in place, just leave it dry. And although it looks like a lot of paint, once that dries, that's going to give you the contrast between highlights, mid-tones and the shadows as well. I'm also using that black on the smaller feathers, on the larger ones and the ones you can see there on that brown strap and also the larger ones that pop out from the main bulk of feathers. They're going to be a different colour. So, But for these smaller feathers, they're going to be all black and so I'm giving them a nice thick coat and I'm really putting a lot of paint in here and you can see as I push it in, the paint's almost been sucked in to those feathers and going in, in the cracks and crevices. And the crow, now we're giving that crow a nice coat of black. And this guy, he snapped off um, while I was building. So fine, the join in this was. So I ended up gluing him straight on the head. And I positioned him so it looks like he's kind of pecking the eyeball out. Which kind of fits in with the whole narrative of the Corvus Cabal. And I think uh, that's what this bad boy would be up to, given the chance. Again, this is just going to be one coat of black Templar for this crow. We'll give him a little red eye later on and also a bit of highlighting. But um, you can see it's really easy. Just one coat and just being very neat. This is the time to be neat once you come up against the other colours you've already painted. So that's where you really want to take the time and use the tip of that brush. And now we're going to take Contrast Black Templar and Contrast Terradon Turquoise. And we're going to mix one part turquoise to one part black. Give it a real thorough mix. And then this is going to go on all those larger feathers and the feathers that stick out from the pack, the ones we haven't painted yet. And this is going on nice and thick. And now I'm trying to put on more paint at the base of the feather and then using my brush to flick away to the end of the feather. And this is one of the times where I come away from that rule of starting and ending the brush stroke where I want most of the paint to pull. On occasions like this, where you can come along a piece of material like a feather that doesn't come in contact with any other part of the miniature, you can just flick it off and then that's naturally going to leave it a little bit thinner at the end of the feather, but thicker at the base. And so I'm starting down there and then you can see I'm wiping my brush against the feather and against the grain so that it takes most of the paint off. And again, just push, pull it where I want to go and keep moving the model so it's nice and easy and then I can stay in that same solid position with lots of control and guide the paint to where I want it to be. And there we go, so we're just giving all those individual feathers a coat, and then I've taken that same mix of one part turquoise, one part black, and I'm gonna give it a coat over all those black feathers we did earlier. Um, I'm not gonna put this on the crow, but just on those, those smaller black feathers on the shadow piercer. And again, don't put any of this on the hood, I just kept the hood black. So this is gonna give us nice black crow, black hood and black hair, and then we're gonna get a kind of turquoisey black on these small feathers and then a stronger turquoise black on the larger feathers. So it gives us a little bit of a mix of colours there rather than just all black. Right, now we're on to the Ceramite White and this is a base paint by Citadel and ideally you want to be using the same colour as your undercoat but I don't have any Wraithbone layer so I'm just using this white paint and this is going to work fine. And now I'm using this to tidy up any areas where I've made any mistakes or where I've gone over the lines and crossed over into areas I want to keep that wraith bone or white colour. See I made a mistake on the belt, I got some of that turquoise black on the brown belt on the snake bite leather so I'm going to have to go back and do that again. So I just put some of that white base paint over the area and then we can put contrast over that and you shouldn't really notice any difference there. And this is the important bit, making sure any lines where colours meet they are nice and neat and crisp so I'm really getting in there with that. Okay, now we're on to the Contrast Space Wolves Grey. And I've got to make sure anywhere I touched up is completely dry before I put this on. And I'm putting this on really thick. So you can see my brush is loaded up. I'm taking loads of paint off the brush and then pulling it down. And it's sitting in those recesses, really nice and dark. But on the raised areas, this Space Wolf Grey is quite light. 
so you can see you can really see through it so this is one one paint that's completely different to the terra and turquoise the browns the blacks that we've used so far this is a much more like see-through so you got you got to put like a couple of coats of this on for the space wolves gray and i tried basilicanum gray for this but i didn't like the look of that and i tried um griff charger gray and again that uh, there was a bit blue but not blue enough so i found with space wolves gray two coats that came out really nice so i'm putting a nice thick coat all over really letting it pool into the recesses and you see how it wanted to go up there next to the uh, the turquoise feather and that's given us a really nice dark shadow between those two materials and now i'm going over the little the vest top there that's getting a good coat and i'm not too worried about this color going over the black although i'm being careful but because it's uh, like a lighter color it's not going to show up that much on the black but what it's going to do is give us a bit more extra shadow so just still being careful but not worrying too much and once this space wolf's gray is completely dry then you want to give it one more coat all over the areas you've previously painted with it now i'm back to the ceramite white and i'm going to touch up the areas that we're going to paint with the flesh color later and where i've gone over with that space wolves gray i'm just going to really tidy up those lines so they're nice and crisp and this is the key to getting a really nice good standard for a tabletop ready piece just making sure those lines are neat and crisp and keep the color in within the lines so now i'm onto the contrast gilliman flesh and again we're going to wait for that white to be completely dry before this goes on and then i'm applying this to all the areas of flesh we can see and i'm starting there on the underarm i'm putting this on quite heavy here so this is going to be an area of, of like natural shadow under there. So I'm putting it on nice and thick. And then here, not so thick on this elbow because that's going to catch some light. So we don't want it to pull there. So I'm pushing it and pulling it away from that elbow. So it's not too bright on the end. But underneath, I'm trying to get it in there to highlight those areas of muscle and where they overlap. So I'm pushing that in, wiping my paint off and trying to start and end the brush stroke where I want most of the paint to end up. And you can see how much time you got there. And here I put a little bit too much on for this area. So I just wiped my brush on some kitchen roll and then went back to that blob and then started just pushing it around, pulling it with the tip of the brush. And then on the hand here, we're getting plenty of paint in those between those fingers to give us a nice shadow. The other side as well. And this, this bigger brush is perfect for this. It holds just a great amount of paint that can get in and get all this done nice and even. And then on the back of the legs there on the calves, you can see you've got some really nice areas of shadow where the trousers meet the flesh tone. And now we're moving on to skeleton horde. And this is great for all the skulls and bones. And they've got loads of skulls hanging off them, the Corvus Cabal. And so I'm giving that one coat. And this is really thick. I'm going really thick with this. So this could look a little bit similar to snakebite leather, but it's it's paler. So when it, when it dries, it's certainly a lot more see-through. But um, I'm making sure it goes really into those eye sockets and gives us some really nice dark shadows then. But it's nice and thick, so don't, don't be afraid of putting it on thick here. But be careful it doesn't go on to the other parts of the miniature. These are great sculpts. I really love the Corvus Cabal. And this is what got me into Warcry in the first place. I picked up this set just because I thought it looked cool. And I thought it would be a nice um, set of models to learn to paint with. And then the more I looked into Warcry, I was hooked. And so I picked up the game when it came out, the Catacomb set when it came out in November. And then since then, that's been it. I'm all over Warcry now, so I can't get enough of it. But anyway, back to the model. Now I'm taking some uh, black paint here now, the Contrast Black Templar. And I'm putting it over this beak that while it's still wet. So that's important. It's got to be wet because we want these to blend into each other and give us a nice natural fade between the black tip of the beak going back up towards the skull. And so I'm putting it on quite heavy at the tip of the peak and then working my way up just gradually fading it in using that wet skeleton horde paint to blend the two together. And then we'll get something nice, quick and easy, but that looks really natural. And um, this is a really good way of blending these colours together. And I'm finding the contrast paints are really great for this. And there we go. I'm just put a little bit more black at the bottom and just spread it up. So it's a bit darker at the, the base, but nice and natural. And then on the big beak that she wears, I'm putting all um, Skeleton Horde on, on its own. We're not going to go black on this. On the other miniatures, I went black on the beaks that they wear on their face. But for the Shadow Piercer, I want her to be the leader and to stand out. And again, I'm following that box art there. 
Right, now we're gonna move on to some lead belcher, and this is a base paint, and it's a nice dark silver paint, and this is gonna go on all the metal areas. So we're going on this belt buckle here, and then we move on to all the other parts as well. So I, when I use the contrast paints, I'm pretty much using them straight out of the bottle, and I'm doing the same for this lead belcher. When I use the layer paints, I'll either use my wet palette or a dry palette, just like a piece of plastic, like a lid off a takeaway box, something like that. Um, but for the lead belcher, I find it doesn't work well with the wet palette. None of the metal paints tend to, and um, I just use it straight out of the pot. And so I'm putting it on one coat, nice and thick. I'm not even wetting this down. So this is just straight up one coat. And then once that's completely dry, we can do some other things with it, as you'll see later on. And so I'm working my way through all these metal areas now, finishing that belt buckle, moving up to these um, big long talons she wears in her hands. And these are very fiddly and they almost join one on each finger, but you can still see the fingertip that you want to keep flesh color. So it really is a case of being nice and neat, nice and careful here. And when I first started like painting the signs of the flame, I would have used a smaller brush, but now I've learned that this bigger brush is much better for the really detailed work. You've got more control, it holds more paint, and like we talked about earlier, we can get a finer tip on it by rolling it and dragging it through the paint, and that gives us more control for small details like this. And now I'm going on to these big shin guards. These are really great. And um, this is a nice contrast to all that material and leather and feathers. So having this on this model looks really good. And here we're just, again, it's going to be one coat of the lead belcher straight from the pot. One nice coat that's going to cover it up. And then all over this weapon as well. And then we're going to age these weapons in a second. And I was reading the War Cry anthology book and I read the story in there about the Corvus Cabal and it said that the one of the uh, fighters had weapons that were handed down through generations of fighters and so they're really old and grungy and gross and so we're going to do that later on. But now we're going to take some contrast flesh tear as red and when that lead belch is completely dry we're going to put a coat over the little chaos medallion thing that hangs from the sword there. And all the fighters wear these, which is really nice. And that little bit of red works really good. And now we're going to take a technical paint called Typhus Corrosion. This is a new one I picked up, but I love it. It makes metal look really gunky and gross. And so I'm just putting it on, this time with a really old brush, because the texture of this is thin and a bit sandy. And I don't want to use the um, Ball Gamer brush or my Kalinsky brush for that. So I'm just using a really old brush and just putting it on there. Not too thick, but enough so you can see it. And then that's going to dry, leaving this look like really old metal that's been left out in the rain or the mud for too long. Or just old metal that hasn't been that kept up to date. It's had blood soaked into it and guts and all sorts of gross things. So it's perfect for these guys. There we are. And now we're back to the Ceramite White. And it's time to just tidy up a little bit on this skull and make that stand out against that metal. And so here you can see I've got the brush, nice point to my brush. Again, it's the larger brush, um, and this is number two. So if you want to know the size, it's a number two brush. Um, if you're using Kalinsky, or it's the Wargamer character brush. And so I've done the skull, and now I'm still struggling with this, even after doing all the members of the Warband. Going along these little thin bits, I'm finding really tricky. So it's just trying to move the model into a position that made it easy for me to get the brush in and just touch the top of those little bits that poke out. So it's really fiddly. I didn't make a great job of this, um, but luckily the next stage will cover it up and we'll never know. So that's good good for me. Um, but yeah, it's just really hard. Just I'm trying to use the side of the brush to like rub against it. So some of them I get just as I wanted, but some I put it on a little bit too heavy handed and it just runs off. But uh, not to worry, we can cover it up later. Okay, now I'm taking some Stormhost Silver. This is layer paint and this is nice and bright. So this is gonna be like an edge highlight for all the weapons and all the metal work that we want it to stand out. So although it's aged and gross, um, we still want it to be looking like it's sharp and it's gonna do some damage. So I'm just touching up all those areas that I want to have a little bit of highlight there. And I'm just putting a highlight on those um, talons on the fingers as well. And you can see I slipped and put a little bit too much on, it's a bit heavy handed. And so, but luckily it doesn't dry as bright as you see it here. And often this edge highlighting is good to do a couple of coats, but I haven't done a great job of this edge highlighting, I must admit. But um, for the weapon and for the grossness of it all, 
it kind of worked. So I was happy by the end of it, but I could certainly do better and improve. And this is something I've got to practice and get better at for sure. And I'm just running a little bit along the edge of those feet as well. Okay, now we're going to take some agarus dunes. And once that white and metal paint is completely dry, we're going to put that agarus dunes over the skull on the belt buckle. And this is the bit I mentioned earlier that we'd use to hide up those mistakes. So that works really nice. And now we're taking another technical paint called Blood for the Blood God. And this is going to be awesome. We're going to put it under her neck. And all the Corvus Cabal fighters do this. They've got like blood under their neck and they have it running down the front of them. And whether this is from like um, a bird that they killed before the fight or whether they've killed a fighter and they share the blood around, I don't know. But it just looks awesome. And that red really works well against the natural colours of the browns and the skulls, the blue and turquoise and black on the miniature. And um, also with the base that we do later on, you'll see it's very like yellow. So that works really nice. And a bit of blood on the face too for the eye being poked out. Right, now I took some sky grey, and this is Vallejo, and any grey would work. You could mix just white with black to get a grey too. And I took this um, makeup brush, and I really, we're going to do some dry brushing. So I've got this makeup brush, and really loading it up with paint, and then working that paint into the bristles, and then wiping as much as I can off on the paper towel there. I can highly recommend getting makeup brushes for this. This was like £3, and it's just made dry brushing a lot better. And um, we're going to do a little dry brush of that grey now on these feathers here. So this grey is going to tone down that turquoise on the black feathers, but it's also going to work nicely with the turquoise feathers too and on the black of the crow itself. So I think it's, it's a nice highlight to choose the grey for these colours for sure. And um, you can see here it really brings it all together, brings those feathers to life. I was really happy with, with this stage at the end, not forgetting those little feathers that poke out from under a belt and uh, top as well and then just trying to get in there you can see how fiddly it is it came out of focus a little bit but we're going to come back on the crow now give the crow a little highlight as well there we are just finishing those feathers off there a little bit more on the back as well because it always dries a bit um a bit lighter than you think it's going to be so i put a little bit more back to the crow as well it's really checking it this is the final stage now so i want to make sure i catch every bit and there we go, there's our finished shadow piercer to a tabletop ready standard using contrast paints. I'm really happy with how she turned out. I think these sculpts are done so well that as long as you keep the colours within the lines, you can get some really great results with just one coat of each of these contrast paints. And you can see how with just with that little dry brush at the end, it just adds a little bit extra highlight. I made the miniature separate to the base and painted them separately and if you'd like to see how i did that i've made a video on the base so you can check that out too and the idea with this it's a wheat field wasteland theme and i'll be creating a diorama for the corvus cabal around that idea with an old um like bell tower in amongst all the wheat fields that have been wasted so it's going to look really cool Here's my favourite miniature, the Shrike Talon, and if you'd like to see how I painted that, I went through it a little bit slower, almost in real time, and you can really get a good look at how that was done, and that video's up on the channel too. So these guides include all the colours you need to do the whole Corvus Cabal warband. I'll put some other videos up of some of the Cabalists as well, and I'll put lists in of all the equipment, paint I used in the description below, and there'll be affiliate links, but they won't cost you anything extra in fact they could save you up to 20 percent with element games and every sale made through an affiliate link i get a small commission and that's going to help me develop the channel and do lots more cool stuff so thanks so much for that support i really appreciate it it's awesome thank you i hope this video was helpful i'd love to hear your feedback so let me know what you think in the comments below thanks so much for watching please like if you like it subscribe for more content like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on tabletop skirmish games